This trainer aircraft that I built a little while ago is proving to be a bit of a handful in the air. It has several issues which I need to investigate and in that investigation it would include checking the servos that there's nothing binding. I'm having trouble with the control surfaces so it makes sense to check those things out. I have a servo tester that I built some 30 years ago at least and I know it does have four channels. I've only wired two out but it's a very basic model. It's not going to give me very much information. Recently I was sent this unit by Banggood to evaluate. It's the Toolkit RC multiple servo tester and it's a, a very advanced unit. has has many many features as we will see. One of the good things is that I don't have to go and run around and find 5 volts which I needed for the old tester. It takes 7 to 28 volts in. It's easy then to hook it up to the flight battery that I have already to hand for the, for the model and that will simply plug in like that. One thing from the outset is I really don't like this rather insipid grey display. Fortunately we can change that if we long press the button here. We have a, a range of options. One is to get rid of the rather annoying beep so we can select that and switch it off. That's better. Uh, the backlight is adjustable but what I want to do is to change the theme style to the dark mode. Oh, we all like the dark mode don't we? And that at least for me is much more legible. Let's just play with the backlight value. Yeah, so I'll wind that up really just for the camera to be able to see it and exit and that's a much better display I think. Let me now hook it up to the aircraft and we'll see what it can tell us. I've connected the four servos, that's the rudder and elevator and the two aileron servos up to the four output ports which are indicated here. Let's just lift it off of this aileron and show you it working. Let's zoom in on the screen for you to see that better. What we can see then on the graph are the peaks of the current draw as the servo position which is indicated on the line here is going backwards and forwards. What we can clearly see is that the purple servo is drawing much more current than the others. So looking across we're getting nearly 600, 600, 600 but servo 4 is nearer 900 and sometimes I've seen it peaking over an amp. If we stop there we can actually move back through the display and look at those peaks. So for example there is a peak there. Unfortunately the, the numbers don't change at that point but we can get an indication there that there may be something binding on servo 4. That needs to be investigated. First thing I've done is to disconnect the servo completely so it's just standing alone. If we activate it now we can hear that there's a very strange sound that was being masked by the other servos before. If we take a look at the graph we can see that even without any load on it, it is still drawing over an amp. Clearly that servo is faulty. I didn't mention it before, but when we added up the numbers, you know, there, there were 3 times 600 plus this one. If that was running at 600, then that would be over 2 amps. And the BEC on the ESC is only 2 amps. What I will say is that if all four control surfaces were moving in this fashion, uh, the aircraft would be flying in a very strange <laughs> mode indeed. So it's not a, not a real life test, but you can see how close to the two amps uh, in some circumstances uh, that we'll be getting. All very useful information. Let's now go and take a look at some of the other features in, in brief. I've chosen this little orange servo which is a max 
MX50 and that's the same size. Let's check it for its current draw. And we can see there on S4 about the same as the other servos I tested around uh, 600 milliamps. And listen. Exactly. No strange crunchy noises. I'm powering the unit now from a 2S cell. As I mentioned, the port here is from 7 to 28 volts, so you could go up to a 6S cell, which makes it very convenient. In the box comes a USB lead, which is not particularly useful. Unfortunately, the USB port is only there to enable you to upgrade the firmware. There's no PC interface. Being a thoroughbred geek, I would love to see that and be able to capture this graphical information. But hey ho! You get a condensed manual in the in the box also, which gives you the specifications and very basic guidance as to how the device works. If you're interested in this device, I suggest you download the manual. There'll be a link down in the description. The manual goes into great depth on each of the features and functions. There's our input XT60 that we've seen. On this side we have the rotating knob to set the servo speed and throws. The USB port and if upgrading and port S5. This is the input port for either SBUS, PPM or PWM type receivers. You could then put this in line, got your SBUS for example, input there and the servos you could connect to here. Uh, that would be especially useful if you had perhaps some strange or unbranded receiver and you wanted to check what the channel order was. These four servo outputs then are the ones that you can control from the screen. These ones are fixed and can be mirrored from uh, S4. You can connect up to eight servos but these four servos will only do the same thing. There is rather strangely an output port here. This is for connecting power to specialized servos, maybe an industrial servo that operates at a much higher voltage or current or some type of uh, 360 servos that need a special output. Speaking then of the output at the top of the screen it's indicating 5 volts which is the output voltage. We long press and go into the main menu we can select the voltage output here and that goes through 5 volts, 6 volts, 7.4, 8.4 and 12, 14, 15, 16 all the way up to 28 volts, which is great. What I would have liked to have seen was it going below 5 volts. For some of the very small models that I'm interested in, I'm going to be using these 3.3 to 4.2 volt servos. They may work on 5 volts or they may let out the magic smoke, but it would have been nice to see a lower voltage output there. Finally then, just out of amusement, I've connected up some really old servos. And I think these date back to my 27 meg days, so they're a good 30 years old if they're a day. Uh, but respectable. Still only drawing around the top end of 600 milliamp hours, obviously on no load. In this video, I'm not going to go through all the detail of all the programming that we can do. There is a a multitude of things that you can see on here, changing the input modes to the SBUS or PWM, PPM port, being able to change the step and the speed. Uh, maybe on your receiver for some reason you've offset the output, so you can set it below a thousand microseconds or one millisecond and above two milliseconds and um, all manner of other things. You can set the beginning pulse width, the center pulse width, and the end pulse width in individually uh, as well. My thanks then go to Banggood for providing this module for review. And I think I've demonstrated at the beginning its practical use. It's not for everybody, but if you have a very expensive plane, uh, this will be a valuable investment.